welcome to another episode of Glory of Golden State Gaming. I'm your host, Swamp Swimmer, and with me as always, the Bert to my Ernie, Vespasian. Hey, everybody. <laughs> uh, if you haven't noticed, I am wearing a costume for Halloween. This is the, the Cookie Monster costume. Uh, the wife has got Elmo. The two dogs are Bert and Ernie. We've got a great little group costume for you. But uh, my question for you, Vespasian, is what are you wearing for a costume this year, and what is your all-time favorite costume you've ever had? Yeah, so I've got a caveat by saying that Halloween is not not my not my favorite holiday. I'm not a big Halloween person. Um, but I way back when I was a kid, I, I dressed up as Jerry Rice, a football player for the San Francisco 49ers, and um, he was like my favorite football player of all time. And I, uh, because I was just didn't really want to think too much about it, I basically just wear a Jerry Rice jersey every year. So that's my favorite Halloween costume. <laughs> Ooh, what a letdown, what a letdown. I know, I know, sorry. At least you're doing <laughs> you know something. You're I know I've, I know a fair amount of people who don't dress up at all, period. Okay, yeah, no, I'm, I'm slightly better than that. I've got kids, I've gotta, I've gotta do something, you know? <laughs> um, probably my favorite time I dressed up was I dressed up as uh, Mr. Rogers like in college, I think it was. It was, I had like the perfect red cardigan, the tie, the shoes, the whole thing. And like every time I'd walk into a Halloween party, I'd just sit down next to the door and untie my shoes and take them off, put slippers on and like greet everyone. It was like a thing. Nice, I like it. <laughs> anyway, let's get to the battle report. Uh, last uh, we left off, we talked about round two of Infernal Zoo 2021. And we hinted at this in the last video, but um, both of us ended up with the exact same battle points. And wouldn't you know it, we got paired into each other. Yes. Uh, round three, this is round three, yeah. Uh, it was counter thrust breakthrough, and it's gonna be a good old glory of Golden State grudge match. That's right, lots of Gs. <laughs> We um we have played each other numerous numerous dozens of times in real yes. life, um, but we this is probably like the only second time we've played in a tournament setting. That's right, that's right. Several years ago was the last time. So, but also with an ancient dragon, uh, but with your Saurian. So yeah, funny. Uh, so if you're interested in our list, please go back to the round one videos, both of them, and uh, where we talk about our lists. But let's go right into deployment. Oh, let me talk about magic really quick. Um, on my Shamanism Adept, I took Swarm of Insects and Chilling Howl because you're a strong, heavy shooting army. I need, I just need both of those. And when I get shit in combat, I don't really need the plus one strength or toughness, so. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure I did Stars Align, Hereditary, um, and then and um, uh, Unerring Strike and Fate's Judgment, and then um, for the Master of the Chronic Tower, I did um, Healing Waters. Um, you definitely had Raven's Wing. Aw Awaken the Beast and Raven's Wing, and then and I'm just what I'm what I was trying to puzzle out was what did I have on the general, and now I, I can't think of it. Oh, the um, yeah. Anyways, I can't. I just can't remember. Hat. Let's. See. I don't remember. Let's, let's see if, if maybe he, he um, maybe he we we see the spell come out, but yeah. Oh, actually, here. Here are your spells in a pile here. Base oh, there you judgment. go. You... I don't know. Uh, yeah. Actually, maybe I got healing waters. Hand of heaven. Heaven. heaven hand of heaven. Oh, hand of heaven. Okay, there you go. Makes sense. Uh, so this is your deployment. So I go, go over your deployment really quick. Yeah, so um, important to, to also mention that we have, um, this is the special scenario, here be giants. And so everybody got a giant. Um, and so, um, and then also this is breakthrough, but models with towering present counts as scoring for the purpose of the objective as well. Um, so it, it adds a, not only am I playing beast herds with ambushers in a breakthrough scenario, but also all of your giants count as scoring as well. So kind of the nightmare there um, from a scenario perspective. Um, so we've got the sloop on the left, uh, that little impassable kind of obelisk and then the ancient in the middle zoning the center with some optionality um, and then the two bolt throwers the sea guard kind of front and center there in the forest are the queen's guard with both of the characters and then I, it looks like this is after vanguards because my re 
numbers are sort of up there. Yeah. Um, and um, and then we've got the uh, lions behind them on the hill and the uh, highborn giant on, on the right there. And then actually my little spear unit is just out of frame on the yeah. right hand side. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's see. And do, do you know who dropped to go first? It might have pretty, been. Pretty. I'm pretty sure it was you. Yeah. Yeah, because I think I think you advanced pretty pretty heavy in, in turn one. So um, I got from left to right. I this is my extra giant. There's he has an extra size base because he has a big brother. Uh, notice that it's not a not a beast herd model there. That looks like a giant turtle. I got him. I chose him to fit into my uh, my Soaring Ancient army, but. He's a cool model, so I, had, I couldn't say no to it. Uh, so he's the big brother giant there. Gargoyles in front of him. I got giant, wild horns, giant, minnow block, gargoyles, and then the other wild horn block. And I think you have some centaurs over on the right in the field. Yes, and but there's yeah. centaurs over there that are shown right there, see? Yep. So yeah, let me just yeah. Okay, I did get first turn. So let's go ahead and, and go you, into that. And you started them. You started them drunk so they could score. Right. Yeah, I always call. start the giants and the centaurs drunk in a regame because it's okay. just I love the the fearless. That's what I love. Yeah. So I push up pretty hard here. Um, Makes sense. I felt good okay. with the giant on the left pushing up. Because the impassable is here to like kind of dodge around, and I can take, I know I can take those spears. Uh, you have the giant there, which is the the the, the lion cloak giant. Right. So he does he does multi wound two against your your giants, which is which is nice for sure as a in, in this situation. It's a little scary, but I felt like I could. Just because I, I feel like you put the spears there just to go for the objective, and I think this giant can just stop them from getting the objective. That's what I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. So I pushed up pretty aggressively in the center here with the giants and the wild horns straight towards the sea guard. I pushed the minotaurs straight towards your general. I felt that was a great combat. I wanted that all day. Mm -hmm. um, and then the wild horns on the right just push up. They don't. They're not too concerned about the the sky sloop, and then I use the um, the centaurs to to zone the sloop. Mm -hmm. That was my whole process. It was just get up there. I wanted to get in your deployment zone, and I wanted to win secondary, mm -hmm. which I had a good chance of winning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I get Blackwing on this unit, which is the the unit in the center of the board here. Uh, I was imagining going for some long charges in the center, because I'm I just need, I need to get in combat with you as fast as I can. That's th that's what I was thinking. Yep. Um, let's see. I think I did swarm of insects and took one wound off your your ancient dragon. Correct. Yep. Which is not bad, uh, and that goes to your turn. So then you can go and talk about your turn. Yeah. So um, basically. Um, from left to right, I um, I push the spears up, and my thinking here was, um, you know, if I want to if I want to have really any chance of winning or pushing the objective, I I'm gonna have to take some risks on the left. Um, and my thinking was, if I can hold the one times seven with the spears, then they should do a decent number of wounds to the giant, just lot, you know, lots of volume, um, hitting well. Um, and the, and then the, you know, my, you know, monster killing, you know, guy should should be able to come in and, and help finish that up. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, awesome, special delivery, got a cookie. Sweet. Um, so, um, thank you. Um, so, you know, my, my thinking there was basically like, you got to bet big to win big. Um, you know, I think in a, you know, in a, in a little bit of a different scenario, I probably would have played a bit more KG there and maybe, you know, looked to like um, chaff with the giant first and then, you know, arrange like a flank charge with the spears and just kind of like try to keep you out of my deployment zone. But um, 
in this particular case, I was kind of hoping that what I could do was I could pick up that giant and then get both of those scores into your um, deployment zone, which would, I think, kind of even up the objective a little bit. Yeah. Um, so that was my thought there. Um, otherwise, you kind of left me this nice big space over in the um, – over in there, so I was I basically pushed up hard with the lions to to you know threaten counter charges, and I put the reavers in a kind of a utility space out of charge arc so that they could chaff in the following turn. Mm -hmm. uh, I pulled the dragon back because I didn't want you to get a charge in, um, and I think I backed up with both the sea guard and the yeah, queen's guard um, mm -hmm. to make long charges for your for your wild horn unit. Um, and then on the right hand side, I was able to find a nice little spot where you couldn't charge me, but I could still shoot at your centaurs because basically my whole hope for that sky salute was that it would be able to finish off those centaurs and prevent them from scoring the objective and then also play kind of like a backline defender when you popped your ambushers up. Mm -hmm. So overall, I was feeling I was feeling pretty good at this point, you know, aside from obviously the kind of dicey, uh, dicey move on the on my right, your left to try to try to even up the objective. So yeah, I definitely thought about that afterwards. I think it's really it's really close to a 50 50 who wins that combat. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I, I, I actually don't like that highborn lion giant on paper, mainly because he's strength five. Mm -hmm. which I think is like, if he's supposed to kill monsters like WTF, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I wish they had gave, given him the great weapon or the, you know, or like a club or something like that. But I didn't really like him on paper, but I just, I kind of went for the themey choice. I knew I'd be facing monsters in this tournament. And so I just, and it was a, it was one game. So I just went for it to try it out and um, yeah. we'll see how it does. Um, in theory, he could, kill that giant in one turn right i mean he yeah it's like, it's uh, it's just it's it's four up four up with for him and so it's super swinging yeah. it's super swinging. yeah exactly exactly uh, right. so um uh, that's another picture of the same thing oh no this is after shooting so, yeah yeah so in shooting i do the the sloop does incredibly well and kills three centaurs which i mean couldn't have even hoped for that um and then my um my the, I know the Queen's Guard went into the Minotaurs and did five wounds, which I felt really good about. Um, I think that the Sea Guard and the Reapers both went into the Wild Horns, and I guess kind of it's probably about average. They they killed seven, some somewhere yeah. around there. That's so, about right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Oh, okay. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. In yep. my turn. All right. So between the Wild Horns with the Black Wing Totem and your Sea Guard. It's a 17. I remember that correctly. Which means mm -hmm. I'm movement 5, which takes in a 12 inches, and I have black wing on an average will give me 3 extra inches, so it's a 9 on dice to make it to you. Right. So I was like, that's swingy, but I felt like I'm going to take the stand and shoot, but I feel like if I make it, that's going to be really, really good for me. That's what that's what I was thinking. Okay. I think yeah. both, both units, like, do a lot of wounds to each other but i think i break you and then i think i'm 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 sitting really well if i do that so i go i did have i did have the hereditary app so that's worth with yeah. with, with full token so that's worth mentioning but yeah so i went for it i rolled on the d3 plus one inches for blackwing i rolled a one so it's only additional two inches so i needed to roll a 10 and i rolled i rolled it and i got a 10 i got two two fives and you right. can see you can see from Vespasian's body language that he was he was devastated. Look at look at that. That's just oh. Yeah. So I do I do six going with the with the stand and shoot, which I think is is like pretty pretty good. Yeah. Um it's like slightly above average. Um and we talked about this after the game. Uh, to be honest with you, with Hereditary up, I I did not actually think that this was that bad of a combat because mm -hmm. I knew I'd have both the stand and shoot striking first and then also the ability to prevent four, four wounds um so i was i was actually okay with this one um well we'll see how it how it ends up yeah i guess you I also mean, put the giant with the spears over on the left yeah put the giants in i like i i think that was a great move for me i think there's a chance of me breaking you and maybe overrunning out of your uh, your giants arc like i just i thought that was a great move i i was happy with that charge mm -hmm. either you fail the terror or you fail in combat mm -hmm. 
But uh, yeah, here I knew I was gonna buff you up in my turn, buff my unit up. <laughs> so even if you killed a ham, a, a big chunk of my guys, I still felt confident about it. Um, let's see here. Uh, my ambushers come on. I put them behind the sloop over here, <laughs> on the far right. Uh, I throw the giant. I throw the gargoyles up to block your to chaff your um, lion cloaks, whatever they're called. <laughs> And I put um, the, Lion Guard, yeah. Lion Guard. Why do I keep calling them Lion Cloaks? I put the giant in front of your Queen's Guard to just cause problems because I don't think you're going to charge him and I could charge something else the next turn because you don't have any counter <laughs> charges on him. I keep moving the Wildhorns on the right up to go after basically scoring opportun uh, uh, secondary op opportunities and to threaten your... I I feel I think I feel confident with them into your um your ancient. I think they mm -hmm. would they would grind him down eventually with my magic, but we'll see. So that's movement. Uh in in magic, I get spectral blades off on these guys, which I felt good about. So it means I'm I'm hitting you on threes with a reroll. And I'm wounding you. Fours with a reroll. Is that you defensive four? Five. Oh well. Fours of the reroll, still pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Fours yeah. of the reroll, and then rerolling to wound, and I'm probably popping my plus one strength banner, so three plus to wound. So I'm just gonna do just a, a bajillion wounds. Yeah, and my main objective here was to prevent you from getting defensive buffs up, like gnarled hide or something mm -hmm. like that, and 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 also blooded horn, because I think that obviously that attack volume makes this different in my yep. in my opinion. So I was I you were wounding well already, so I figured this was okay. Uh, let's see here. I uh, and here's the result. Yes, yeah. There, there, this was a little bit of a a little bit of a roller coaster ride because um, actually initially I won this combat and broke you and ran you down. And then I remember and then, and I then had you remembered that you had spectral blades up and you um and then you ended up winning the combat by um by one one or two yeah something I, like that. Yeah, and I and I failed the steadfast eight or nine, whatever rerollable, whatever it was, mm -hmm. and um, and and ran off the board, and you reformed. Um, so you know, I mean, obviously failing the steadfast eight or nine rerollable is is not likely. Um, mm -hmm. Rolling rolling the ten charge also is not likely. I think that the outcome of the the combat is about what I expected, which is like fairly even. Yeah. Um, and you can see, I mean, there's, at this point, you're, what is that, six wide? So you've got 17, 16 guys left from your initial 40, right? Mm -hmm. So I did I did do a pretty It was bloody, pretty yeah. Yeah. Hold on I just can't one write... second. Yeah. Yeah, just, I need like 10 minutes. Okay. Um, so so yeah i think that um i think that that was well anyways the failing the rerollable was was bad but um yeah so not not in a great position now and you yeah. were able to reform the arc of the dragon which was which was good too so um okay um so we missed we missed a couple things here yeah so so in in in, in, in the combat on the yeah. far left yeah, i do i do i do bunch. i do like over half the unit i think i kill yeah but and, I stick. But you stick on steadfast. No, no. I, you, you, I, I had enough to be steadfast, so I would have needed like you know a, a ten plus or something. And um, I must killed nine or ten, yeah. Yeah. So I, so I, I held there, um, and then and and you know didn't run. So that was that was good. Things were working out as I as I'd hoped on on that one. Um, and I did do two or three wounds as well. I think so. I think you did. Yeah, I think it was one, if I remember correctly. But that oh, really? Well okay. Yeah, so yeah. Under, underperformed yeah. a little bit, but yeah, okay. Um, so here we go. In your okay. turn. Go yeah, ahead, so, so a, a little little bit of a spoiler. Maybe maybe rewind so you can kind of get the, the overview. Um, so in my turn, I um, I charge with the lion giant uh, into, on the left-hand side. Um, and then I see an opportunity with the reavers where I can hit the flank of your gargoyles and overrun into that giant, which mm -hmm. would basically solve two problems for me um so i do that um i turn the queen's guard um and back up enough so that i'm far enough to be able to stand and shoot on your 
wild horns because the way I figure it, one round of shooting and then a stand and shoot and then all of my attacks before you swing, I think that unit's basically gone. So I was yeah. uh, comfortable with that, assuming the Reavers make the overrun into the giant. And this is another one where I, I literally, I think in my head, I've literally said I wouldn't normally do this, but given the given the mission um, and this these bloody zoo cards, what were there was the one that I had left was killing the opponent's general. I charged the ancient dragon into the minotaurs, yep. right? Um, and you know, we we can see how how this one ends up. And then lastly, I it's hard to see, but the sloop does have a flank charge into those wild horns. Yeah, yeah. You, and my whole yeah. You see the edge here, so you go over the impassable and go into my flank. And I didn't feel that crazy. I didn't feel that bad about it because my general is right there. So it was a. This Even is if just you to hold yeah. you up and yeah. it, for two turns, and so that the ancient could do the work he needed to do on the Minotaur unit, right? So that was that was it was basically just an aggressive chaffing maneuver. <laughs> um, so so that's that's how that one ended up. So now let's fast forward a little bit. So in in my in my turn um, in, of, of magic, I get um, I get awaken the beast for res up on the on the. Um, on the ancient dragon because that makes him res seven, um, and I and I was like, okay, so this this is kind of a this will be all right now. Um, I do everything that I plan to do with the queen's guard and start, and I, I think your wild horns are down to like almost nothing at that yeah. point. Um, they're like down like ten guys or something. The reavers do break the gargoyles, run them down, and pin the giant. So that that was a successful double double maneuver there, and then the sloop gets you know gets in takes i think one or two wounds and or maybe even three but wins the combat by one yeah. and you feel your steadfast and nine. i fail my <laughs> nine re-rollable and you run them down um that's Which the is, real that's the real danger yeah. of um of horde formation is just like not having those three ranks would have really made a difference yeah exactly so that one uh, totally unlooked for but um but went obviously better than than expected um and then we get into the into the dragon combat, and you feed me your champion because yeah. you have no buffs up, right? So you you want to wait. That was until my you thinking. Get some buffs I was up. I yeah. was like, okay, take my champion. I'm yeah. happy to give you my champion for next round of magic, and I can hopefully get some buffs up. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So I paced I paced him, and and um, and now we're on to your turn, right? Yep. Uh, and then in my turn. So remember the sloop was there after killing my wild horns. We do a little merry-go-round where I charged with my um, my centaurs. You fled in front of the gargoyles. Charged them with the gargoyles. They fled in front of the um, ambushing longhorns. Then I charged them with the the wild the longhorns and then put them like almost back to where he was. And then I ran him down with the the centaurs. So a little loop de loop, but uh, I got him eventually. Oh, you know what? Now I'm remembering this. You actually, you actually, I actually didn't hit your giant with the with the yeah. reavers. Um, I think I must have just dance. I danced out of your arc instead, or something happened there. Yeah, I don't know exactly what happened there. But you, one way no, or the yeah, other, I was. I remember what happened. The, the the queen's guard were able to maneuver to get out of the giant's arc. I didn't put them in a right orientation so the giant could see them. So your your queen's guard just went out of the way of my giant and i yep. think you did go for what you're talking about with the with the um with the reavers yeah, I, but, I but they failed to right. overrun yeah uh, and, and then we also we also missed the, the the great match that everybody was waiting for over on the left hand uh, uh. side so in my turn you i do zero wounds with the lion giant or maybe yeah. just two no you did zero like you did zero the, the spears do hardly anything, and you just break me on res. And um, this, I think maybe the spears escaped, and you chased the giant. Or exactly, the, the spears one, one ran. Way or the, other. Yeah. the spears were down the two guys, so they ran up yeah. to the uh, to towards you, and then yeah. I I decided to pursue the giant, and I caught him. Yeah, yeah. So that went absolutely miserably um, <laughs> in the second half of my plan. So. Yep, um, and then I think that I guess we're now now onto your turn. So you, you and I realize, and I realize here that um, I'm not gonna be able to win with this depleted wildhorn unit. So I just turn them and run them in your deployment zone, and maybe I can 
be lucky enough to take out the other uh, um, bolt thrower. Bolt thrower. Uh, the giant that we were talking about earlier had a clear charge, so that bolt thrower was a little bit of a long charge, but I made it, which was nice. Um, and that's about it. Uh, losing that my big block of wild horns on the right hurt a lot. <laughs> But um, but I feel like I still feel that like it's a decent game because I'm I'm obviously gonna win secondary at yeah. this point. Yeah, with my gambit on the left, yeah. not only not paying off but also losing me the two units at the, the secondary is kind of a foregone conclusion. Yeah. So it really all comes down to this fight in the middle at the end of the day. And this is jumping ahead a little bit. I I I tried to buff my uh my minotaur unit but i didn't get anything off i couldn't get anything through because uh i think it was you got like the one or the two phase um yeah. i think and, and then also um, one of my soothsayers was dead i think it was the shamanism one no it was the evo one oh. um and that that was big because not having to stop the spectral with arcane mastery was was the difference maker there because basically yeah. I had close to like even dice against your totems essentially because you exactly, had no yeah. uh, you had no combat buffs from shamanism and I was able to 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 stop them which to be honest is you know probably above average to do it because they're low you know they're they're low casting values so yeah so we so we, we jumped to the magic combat. phase yeah and yes yeah. so obviously you see the result there is no more dragon there so you you challenge obviously and I'm like it's still not opportune for me, but it's now or never. Your next turn, I can't remember if you have your hereditary up at this point or not. No, I have. I have awakened the beast for for res. So, and, but that's it. I'm, but yeah, I'm, I was res worried. Seven, seven runes left. Yeah. And I decided to to accept with my warlord and like let's just have the fight now because I was worried you were going to get the hereditary in your face. Um, I was also thinking at this point like. I felt confident because I felt like I had two rounds to fight you because I accepted the challenge but didn't pop my um, potion of swiftness because I thought I could I, I was confident I could survive one round with him and then and then I'd pop my potion of swiftness next turn so that means I it, the question is if I can kill the dragon in two rounds with the warlord which that's what I thought I could do yeah but yeah i mean i've i've done the i've done the math on this and um the the ad with the breath weapon you know the, basically this this exact scenario does like 4.5 wounds to the warlord hmm. on average so it's i guess slightly ab above average likelihood that i kill him in one round um which obviously is very dicey and the the destiny's call you know four ups are are always a, f a coin flip right Sweet, so yeah so I was I was actually my I was pretty okay with this because the way I was thinking about it is, is that then in the next turn it's my magic phase. I've got healing, I've got multiple combat buffs that should yep. make that kind of a foregone conclusion. Um so I was thinking that I was I was also okay. <laughs> mm. Um and then something happened that neither of us ex expected, which is that your warlord one shots him. <laughs> yep. With the with the plus one toughness, I uh, I think I rolled four sixes to hit. And then re-rolling yeah. to wound, I also I, I was winning you on fives, and I rolled out of the box. Yeah, you did. You did eight I I, wounds, and I and I made one six-up save out of eight, and yeah. and that was exactly what you needed. Seven wounds. Um, so you know, obviously, obviously disappointing. You know, uh, long-term fans of my blog on the uh, on on the on the forum will remember a, a, a similar situation where my ancient dragon got eaten by Omer's unit of, of minotaurs as well. Um, so I guess I just have to learn the lesson and not not <laughs> put that ancient dragon into using us of minotaurs. That's the that's the lesson, boys and girls. <laughs> so that happened. Uh, I killed the bolt thrower back there. My giant turns around. Uh, and this is your turn. Yeah, so Obviously, I've got a few different priorities here. Um, you know, with the with the Minotaur, you know, depleted, I actually felt okay about the lions fighting them. Um, I used the Reavers to chaff that giant. Um, Queen's Guard are, you know, are ready to, to try to finish off that Wild Horn unit um, and, this, and the other Soothsayer. Um, and at this point, I basically am just trying to preserve the like the two big units and, and characters that I have left, um, mm -hmm. and see if maybe I could get a hold of that Minotaur uh, unit with the lions, basically, because you don't really have a lot else to threaten me over on that side. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's where we ended up here. Um, and I decided this. I real we realized at this point we were gonna get through one more turn. Yeah. Uh, so I just decided to throw my giant and sacrifice my giant to the um, to the uh, white lions, uh, and I and on the up here I knew you're gonna try to shoot the what well, I think there's like two guys left in that original wild horn unit. So I pop up my ambushers in front of them and the gargoyles, thinking I can maybe protect them with from shooting. Oh, uh, and and you do something very crafty in your turn. You. You, uh, you Raven, raven swing them out so that I can see them with with just the yeah, corner. Yeah, yeah. You raise them like, like, basically at the board edge, so like one guy could see one guy, and then since it's yeah. it's volley fire, all of them can see. So you ended up getting that unit, but that was that was very crafty of you. Yeah. Yeah, that was another that was another one. I I, I think um the the lesson the lesson that I have from this one is stick to your game plan. Um, you know, I I thought about this match actually a little bit. For the tournament and i was i felt pretty good about it because i figure corner up I, I even remember thinking to hope that it's not the breakthrough mission um <laughs> corner up and um and just shoot the absolute bejesus out of out of stuff and then you know finish off what's left with the lions and the ancient um yeah and instead i went aggro with the ancient and uh and the sea guard and had them you know too far up and paid for it so it's a it's a good I mean, it's. I, I still am a bit salty about the fact that we only had two hours to play this round, which I think I might have played it a little bit differently we if both, I thought we'd have yeah. three. That was yeah, to my but, benefit because we were playing. We were both playing speed, and my game plan was just push forward, so I didn't have to think too hard about it. And you were. I think the the speed of the game caused you to make some some tactical mistakes, which in this particular situation, you you needed more time to think about what you needed to do. Yeah, I was, yeah. I think I, I needed yeah. to play a lot cagier than than this to yeah. to hope to get a win because I think the scenario was was to your advantage for for obvious reasons. Um, but that's I mean that's on me. Got to got to play better. Um, so. Yep. So that's the end of the game there, and it ends up with uh, a sixteen to me. There we go. Which is not officially too bad. tied up on tournament results, Kenya. Yeah. We got to uh, we we, we got to get a, 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 a tiebreaker coming up sometime soon. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Yeah, we do. We do. I need the we need to meet up uh, at your place again, or maybe come down here, and we'll 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 get a game in. Yeah, good game. You played well. I mean, I I got you know I think we both got some luck. It's just I think your your luck yeah. mattered a little bit more. Taking down that wild horn unit obviously was ridiculous <laughs> the wild horn unit was just super sweet yeah uh, i think the combats that really mattered were this giant on the left and the minotaurs against your uh, ancient of course and i think yeah both of them were around 50 percent i think even even if you killed my warlord with your ancient i still had my other character i still had a whole unit of minotaurs but the danger was your magic phase healing and yeah. um yeah I think that's that's yeah, pretty, his, his yeah. buffs his buffs can get you know because you, you it's important to remember with that warlord gone i did five wounds to the minotaurs before i went in and then killed the champ right so you're you're actually you actually don't have that much of the unit left right mm -hmm. you're down eight wounds so my thinking was if i if i take that warlord off then everything i have is swinging before you there's just not going to be a lot left. And if I've mm -hmm. got any defensive buffs off, I think I, I could scrape it. But yeah, anyways, we'll never know. Um, maybe someday <laughs> in the future we will. <laughs> we got to get yeah, a rematch. Yeah. Good game, man. You play well. Yeah, hey, thanks. Good game to you, too. Um, yeah. But that's all we got. Hey, if you're still watching, please like and subscribe. Uh, but we will see you in the next battle report. Have Take a care, good night. Everybody.